Hi, I'm Susan, and um, I'm here for another my one of my short talks about art and life. And I'm starting today with talking about Bill Russell, the legendary basketball player. Um, Bill Russell, and the reason I am is because there was um, there is a new documentary about him on Netflix, a two part one that's that I think is really quite good. Um, so. Bill Russell was a legendary basketball player. He played for the Boston Celtics throughout his career for 13 years. Of those 13 years, they won the championship, 11 of them. And, the, and two of those were when he was both a player and a coach. Um, he was one of the first black players in the league in the beginning of black players coming into the league. And um, he dealt with a lot of racism uh, in Boston and elsewhere. And uh, he was also very involved in the civil rights movement. So he was um, worked with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He was in the March to Washington, um, where the, he gave the I Have a Dream speech. Um, he was given the Presidential Medal of Freedom by Barack Obama. And then he continued his activism. There is a picture, he tweeted a picture of himself with his Medal of Honor, uh, Medal of Freedom, um, taking the knee. So, um, but the thing that really made me want to talk about him here is something he said towards the end of the documentary. And he said, one of the things that I think is very important for every person to know is that you are not alone in the universe. You come here alone and you leave alone, but the rest of the time, the in-between, you are not alone. And that got me thinking about sort of artists and aloneness, and I think a lot of people sometimes perceive artists as loners, that they are kind of, and, and in some ways we are, you know, we are doing things kind of strictly to our own um, inner sensibility. But I'm thinking of myself, for example, I never feel alone when I'm in the studio. And part of the reason is the materials I work with, the tools I work with, all of those things, they're kind of my companions in the work. So it's not just me, it's more than me. And so I don't feel alone. And then the other way in which I don't feel alone is that I have a sense of other artists. Um, and I would say, I mean, it's not something I think about all the time, but there is a sense that there is a presence of, of other people doing the same work um, that are with me. And in particular, people who I have known, who have, who have passed, people who um, have been influential in my life, and then also just people, artists that I admire and that I read about I, and I admire how they work and what they create. Um, so this sort of leads me to another quote, which is something that I did. So whenever something kind of momentous happens, I usually try to find a quote that I can write about it. And it, that includes when people die. So my friend Deirdre McCullough Grunwald um, died in 2018. And um, I went looking for a quote and the one that I had saved that came that I really seemed to speak to it was one by John Berger who is it was started as a painter and then became a writer primarily best known I think as an art critic um, and so what he's referring to he's not talking about art he's talking about things that you would find in nature but what he said was that we find a crystal or a poppy beautiful means that we are less alone that we are more deeply inserted to, into existence than the course of a single life would lead us to believe. So I wrote this out for Didi, dear, for Didi, and the idea of it was that her work made us feel less alone. And so I'd like to talk just a little bit about her. I'll say for one thing, if you look below, you can find a link to see some of her work. Um, but we were friends, so we, I had known her for about 40 years. We were kind of fellow artists and that was our, I mean, we would talk about family, we would talk about our kids, other things, but the bond, real, but there was a real strong bond that was just based around our art. And um, so this is just a little bit about hers. Like the Celtic spiral she created, Deirdre was always venturing out and circling back, integrating pattern and still life, giving attention to onions and daffodils and exploring the territory of the mind with works like Renewal and Sun Mandala. She dealt with the pain and complexity of life by creating a safe, a place of safety and nurture for herself and for all those who experienced her work. And so, you know, sometimes with my friends or who are artists, I mean, sometimes we'll talk about, 
uh, what I had talked about before, how is it hard to say I'm an artist, you know, kind of the insecurities that for a lot of people come with the territory. And Didi and I never talked about that and she never seemed to be that person. She always seemed incredibly clear that she was doing the work she was put on earth to do. And um, so um, I've kind of closed, I, I, for the Yul J. Rofer, I go, Didi leaves a legacy of art and inspiration. Her prodigious work ethic brought into being a beautiful body of work, which speaks to us all. And then this is what I kind of envision her. I mean, she never said these exact words, but this is what I feel she would say about her work and, and us. Um, be brave, be bold, work from your heart, share what you know. And then this is kind of the message that I take for all of us. The truer we can be to our own visions, the more we honor hers. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.